chapter 1, Psalm chapter 1, the Bible said, Blessed is the man who walks uh, not after the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates, say it, day and night. And because of that, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. And whatsoever he doeth. Look at somebody and say, just do it. Turn to somebody else and tell them, you got to just do it in your life. Just do it. Spirit of God, I thank you for this word and I thank you for this day. I thank you for every person that has pressed their way into the sanctuary. I ask God that you would feed the flock of God. Let what I hear go, uh, what I say go beyond just their ears and their head and their mind, but let it go deep into their spirit so that when we walk out of here, we will walk out and demand change in our lives. I thank you for it now in Jesus name. Amen and amen. On your way down, hit somebody and tell them just do it. It's, it's just time. It's time for you to just do it. Just do it. Yes. David, who most say is the author of this passage, uh, he was a man that knew what it was like to go through massive transformations in his lifetime. He faced all different levels of transformations. He, he faced spiritual transformation. He faced economical transformations. He faced social transformations. He was born a commoner and he was born to a man who was a commoner and his entire life turned upside down one day and it turned upside down because he brought down a, a, a giant by the name of Goliath. He woke up that morning as David, but he went to sleep that night as Israel's hero. So like that, he moved from being a commoner into being a king. At least he was positioned to, to be the king. He went from being assigned to his father's sheep to being assigned to Israel's king. He, he was, if, if you really read his story and you start looking into his background, he is really one of those rags to riches type stories. He's one of those, if you uh, compare the before to the after, it really is amazing what God did in this man's life. Anybody that has made it through transformations in their life, they should be able to, and they, uh, they, sh they ought to be able to uh, help others by telling, uh, telling them what they should do and what maybe they shouldn't do when their life faces similar transformations. Now, if you have, if you are a person that has uh, ever known that you were a blessed person and, and, and you kind of have this memory of what it was like maybe to live in a season where you weren't so blessed, then when God does that thing in your life, there ought to be something in you that enables to look at somebody else that's struggling with the blessing in their life and you can be able to help them as they walk on the journey that they need to walk on to begin to obtain that blessing. Look at somebody and tell them, I have to be blessed. 
Now, that, that is imperative. I, I, anybody that's here, that works here, that, uh, uh, most of you that attend this church frequently uh, and you call this church your home, you have heard me talk about the blessing of the Lord. I am one person that has to have it. I will always recognize that I have to have it because in myself, I am not enough. Yeah. So if I have his blessing, that changes the game. If I have his blessing, I am more than enough. So what does it mean then to be blessed? It means to be happy. It means to be favored. And it means to be successful in the face of adversity. What it doesn't mean is that you won't face adversity. It doesn't mean that you won't have trouble just because you're blessed. Does it mean that you won't have difficulty or distress because you will and, and, and yet when you are blessed some way, somehow you will always survive it. Yeah. Any blessed people know what I'm talking about. So therefore those of you that might be sitting around waiting for everything to be perfect in your life so that you can stand up and say, I am blessed. You are going to be waiting for a mighty long time because that's not what the blessing uh, it, it really is. And, and that's not, that, that, that is not what, what it's for. As a matter of fact, a lot of times uh, you can judge how blessed you are by the level of trouble or the level of adversity that you are able to stand up under. Hello, does anybody know what I mean? You, that's how you can tell that you are blessed because anybody else could have lost their mind. They should have lost their mind. Uh, they almost lost their mind. But by the grace of God, you stood up under that and you were able to bear that. And that's not because you're so strong, but it's because God is so good and he has blessed your life. And when the storms of life have come and knocked your legs out from underneath you, you have always managed to land on your feet. And that is how you know you are blessed. Have you ever seen people who no matter how many times they get knocked down, here they come again? I mean, I've seen, have you been one of those people that no matter how many times you got knocked down, you were still on your way back up. I mean, I mean, you just knew this one had wiped them out like, like nothing else. You knew that they, they would never come back up again. You were down for the count and you were not going to get up again. And then you turn around and you look and you're standing on your feet. Or that person that you thought was never getting back up, he, they will go down in one name and come up in another. Look at somebody and tell them I'm just blessed like that. And, and when I say blessed, please understand that it's not always uh, about something that is tangible. The blessing is not always about something that is materialistic. Okay, we, we have a tendency, our mind goes there at first, but sometimes it's just the things that were thrown at you to distract you, to delay you, and to detour you, but by the grace of God, you stayed focused and you kept moving anyway. Look at somebody and tell them, I've been blessed to keep it moving. People thought I would not make it. They thought I would not survive. They thought I would not come through it. They thought I would not come out of it. They thought I could not outlive it. But I am still here by the grace of God. Look at somebody and tell them I'm here in living color. I am here. Now, another thing that we have to know when it comes to the blessing is that to be blessed speaks to the end of a thing. Okay, to be blessed speaks to the end of a thing. So when God says that he's going to bless you, he is actually speaking to your end. It's just like a curse. And a curse speaks to the end of a thing. 
We, if, take for example the fig tree. When Jesus was walking and he saw he was hungry and he saw a fig tree, and when he got close, he realized that all the fig tree had was leaves, but it didn't have no fruit. He cursed the fig tree. It did not drop dead that day. But the next day, when they were coming through town, one of the disciples said, Sir, that's the tree that you cursed yesterday. So it looked like it didn't affect the tree when he he walked away but here they are now 24 hours later and the tree has hit the ground it's because a curse speaks to the end of a thing God said to Adam and Eve, the day that you eat of this tree, you shall surely die. Just because they did not die instantly does not mean that they were not in the dying process. Why? Because a curse speaks to the end of the thing. Whenever you, cut, whenever you uh, 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 confront your kids and you say things to them like, boy, you will never be nothing. Your daddy was never nothing. Do you know what you're doing? You are not, yeah, yeah, I, you are not cussing them. You are cursing them. And what you are saying speaks to the end. Hello? It's sad, but many children have go grown up to go astray because the mama or the daddy or those that had a voice into their life spoke things like that over them. Be careful what you say. God says to the people that, that don't honor him in their finances that they are what? Cursed with a curse and now they they might be making more money than you are they might be living in a better house than you live they might be driving a better car than you drive they might be growing bigger businesses than it looks like yours is but a curse speaks to the end of a thing so just because you're blessed it looks like you're blessed it does not mean that you'll never have problems or you'll never have struggles or you'll never have disappointments or you'll never have any sex backs in your life blessed means when it is all said and done you'll still be all right in the end because Romans 8 and 28 says of you that all things will work together for your good so David has been through some very tough times but he's a blessed man he made poor choices, yeah. but he's still a blessed man. He failed at some things, but he's still a blessed man. He embarrassed himself and he embarrassed God, but he keeps landing on his feet. And the reason he keeps landing on his feet is because he's a blessed man. Now, now that's, that's probably one reason that David was known as the worshiper of the sweet psalmist in, in, uh, in, in Israel. Because that's probably one of the reasons that he had a true passion for the presence of God. Because real worship comes out of people who are blessed and know that they don't have a right to really be blessed. It's just the fact that God blessed your life. I'm not sure if, if the people who are blessed are inclined to worship or if it's because those who worship are inclined to say, oh, I have been blessed and I don't deserve it. Either way, those of us that have been blessed, there is a true worship that comes out of us that doesn't wait on circumstances. It's just something that we know God has been good to us. He smiled on us. He didn't have to do it. I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it, but he gave it to me anyway. It's, it's probably a little bit of both of those things because uh, it, it's the adversity that we overcome in life that brings us to the awareness that hey you are really blessed you know the song that says millions didn't make it but I am when they start singing that song I chime in because when I, 
because I understand that many people have, have, have given up or they've quit or they've fallen along the way. I will never worship again like I worship before the pandemic. Never again. If, you're wor- if the pandemic did not change the way you worship, then I'm worried about you. Because what it should do is it should make you look back and say, God, I remember the days when I couldn't get out of my house. I remember the days that I walked around and I didn't know what was next. I didn't know what was coming. I didn't know when I turned on the TV, what they were going to say. I, don't, I didn't know when my phone rang, who, who it was or what they were going to tell me. God, I just thank you that that pressure has left, lifted up off of me a bit. And I get to come to church. I preached in here when nobody was in this building in the pandemic. So I'm telling you, as I look out today, I say, God, I thank you. Because you brought me. Millions didn't make it. But tell somebody I'm one of the ones who did. That's why I don't need the praise team to pump me up. Because I came with a bless the Lord oh my. Woo! And when I think of the goodness of Jesus, I ain't studying about you or what you think, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. begin to realize that others went through so much less than what you went through and they failed to make it. You begin to realize God kept me. He kept me. And he blessed me. Look at somebody and tell him I know he blessed me. I know. I would have never made it if he had not blessed me. God and do you think he kept you so you could keep on living on the level you were living on look at somebody and say ain't no way ain't no way he kept you to take you higher I said he kept you to take you higher so There ought to be some people in here today or some people watching me online that say, okay, so then what do I need to do to be blessed? Well, I'm going to tell you, Malachi, uh, church folk don't even like you to say that word, but (laughs) Malachi says in chapter 3 and verse 10, it, it says that we are to bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that we can make sure that there is meat in my house, uh, saith God, that he, so that he could open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a what? Blessing. We're talking about the blessing. God said, if you want the blessing, here's what I expect you to do, because I will open the way, if you will bring your tithe into the storehouse, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, not not just a blessing, but a blessing that there is room in, that, that there would not be room enough to receive. That means when you have been really blessed in your life, there's a reason. Look at somebody and tell them there's a reason I've been blessed. It's, it, there's a reason I got more than enough because God has assigned me to be a blessing to somebody else. I came to break the curse that's in my family tree. I'm tired of watching my family struggle and I am determined to break that in the name. And that's what God said. He said, I will do that for you. And then here in Psalms, one, David points out a few things that I 
that I think are just worthy of us talking about that will help us be prepared to receive the blessing. So it's, it's a pretty straightforward strategy. Look at somebody and tell them there's a recipe, there's a recipe. to being blessed. To being blessed. <laughs> and if what you are cooking doesn't come out like you thought it was supposed to come out, it's probably because you messed up the recipe. So David is very clear and he gives us a, a pretty straight strategy. And if you are crazy enough to believe it, then I believe that it can work for you and for me just like it did for David. Amen. He said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Okay, Here, here's number one. He says, I, if you want to be blessed, quit listening to the ungodly people that are around you. Because I will not bless you if you walk in the counsel or in the advice of the ungodly. Who's the ungodly? People that do wrong. People, people that are wicked. People who are uh, morally wrong. Now, now that's, that's not as easy uh, as, as it sounds, but it is very key to the blessing. Yeah, right. Romans 12 and 2, for instance, says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed how? By the renewing of your mind. In other words, don't let your mind be shaped and don't let your mind uh, 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 be, be groomed by the trends that are happening in the world. I bet if I ask right now, who knows what's trending, there, there would be plenty of you that would say, yes, I know what's trending. But the Bible clearly tells us that we cannot be shaped, our lives cannot be shaped around what is trending in the world. In other words, don't pattern yourself after the world. The world's standards are not your standards. That's right. Oh, yeah, your old-fashioned pastor done come back home. I said the world's standards are not your standards. God, help us. I'm wondering if the church has any standards. To the world's systems are not our system. The benchmarks that the world has is not the benchmark that yours has. Ro the, the role models that the world has are not the role models that you should be modeling after. He is saying, look, I don't want you to conform to the world. Yeah. What I want from you is I want you to be transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. Tell your neighbor, don't conform, but transform. So how do I do that? You do that by being around people that bring your purpose yeah. and your potential yeah. and your capacity yeah. and your capability up out of you. Not being around people who bring other parts of you out. If you want to be transformed, you have to be around people that understand purpose. And the minute that they see you stepping out of it, you need a real friend in your life that that says, hey, 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 let me just tell you right now. You're grown and you can do what you want to do. But I got to call it like I see it because this is going to take you down a road that's going to delay your purpose. Why should I waste my time being around people who keep me crawling like a caterpillar when I'm capable of flying like a butterfly? Think about that right there. Some of us need to reassess 
our associations because if you're not careful they will pull you down back to crawling when God has already let you have a little bit of liberty in soaring when you have the capability to soar it is not worth it to be around people who want to pull you back down to crawling so then how do I transform but not conform it, it, is it by simply being dis disciplined in my life well it, it is but it isn't just being discipline alone because uh, if, if, if you're only being disciplined so you can fit in with church people then you're doing it for the wrong reason if you're only being disciplined so that you can sing with church people and look like church people I'm going to change my clothes I'm not going to dress like y'all I preach that about Gomer you know, Gomer was Hosea's wife. I don't, bless her heart, I don't know why her parents named her Gomer, but for whatever reason they did. And she was trying her best to fit in with church folk, but she, she dressed like them. She tried to clap like them. She tried to act like them. But at the end of the day, when she couldn't take it anymore, she rolled back into her old self. You know why? Because that con that she wasn't being transformed by the renewing of her mind. Oh, it always starts on the inside. Are you following me? You, you cannot just say, I'm going to look like church, fo church folk so I can shout like church folk. Because nothing changes inside of you. If, if nothing changes inside of you, I don't care what you do on the outside. In just a minute, you are going to gravitate back into the same mud hole that you came out of. Nothing, in, nothing changes. If nothing changes inside of you, then there's a problem. And it's sad, but we got a lot of outward Christianity, uh -huh. but no inward transformation. Wow. That's why you see people for a little while, and then you don't see them anymore. Inward transformation begins in your mind. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And whatever your mind feeds on is what you will become. Y'all yeah. hear me? Yeah. Look at somebody say, what you eating? Whatever your mind, I can tell by how you're living. I look at your living and I can tell what your mind is feeding you. If you feed on evil, you become evil. If you feed on racism, you become a racist. If you feed on ungodliness, then you become ungodly. If you feed on prejudice, you become prejudice because prejudice and racism is a learned behavior no baby is pushed out of their mother's womb and has a problem with a nurse and has a different skin tone taking care of them they they learn that through being around the people that they have been around. Babies are not born with racism. They are not born with prejudices. It's not in their heart. It is now, as they grow up, it might get planted in their heart, but it is not there when they come into the earth. They heard it somewhere. They were exposed to it somewhere. They fed on it until they became a part of it. Look at somebody again and tell them, be careful what you eat. Because sometimes when you change what you watch and when you change what you read and when you change what you listen to, you'll be surprised as to how much you can change as a person. 
We pick up so many things simply on the basis of our associations. We pick up behaviors. We pick up speech patterns. Have, have, have your kids ever went and spend the night at a friend's house and come back home talking a whole different language? You just look at them. I mean, have you noticed that, that have, they come back talking a complete, they, they start using initials for sayings. They are fully schooled in another language. Who can I tell you? It came by hearing. And that's what faith does. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more that you hear the word of God, the more your mind gets renewed. And the more your mind gets renewed, the more you are transformed out of darkness into the light. Please hear me when I say that it's easier to renew everything in your life than it is to renew your mind. You can renew your looks. I don't like the way I look. I'm going to find somebody that can help me renew my looks. You can renew your wardrobe easier than you can renew your mind. You can renew body parts easier than you can renew your mind. You can renew energy easier than you can renew your mind. External things can be changed much easier than internal things because the way internal things are changed is by the renewing of your mind. And if you want real transformation, I'm not talking about just church transformation, but if you want real transformation in your life, it will begin by watching what you feed yourself, by watching where you go by watching who you call friend, by talking with who you talk to. It, it, the way real transformation is going to happen is when you stop feeding where you are going. And, I mean, when, when you start feeding where you are going and you stop feeding where you have been. I'm going to say that again. Real transformation happens in our lives when we start feeding the direction we're moving in and we stop feeding where we have been. I don't want to go that way no more. I'm not going to feed that. I'm not going to have friends in my life that try to feed that. I'm going to find somebody that's going where I head and I'm going to hook up with them and I shall be transformed. Be transformed. By the renewing of your mind. So transformation, what does that say to us? That says that transformation begins in our mentality. Yeah. Transformation begins in my mind. It begins in the way that you think. It begins in your attitude. It begins in how I process stuff. And that's what worries me a little bit because my mind hasn't been fully saved yet. Yeah. <laughs> and neither has yours. So I can be doing really good. And then all of a sudden, my mind just go completely out in left field. I know that never happens to you. You are holy, you're worthy. It's just my mind. But I know what that is. My mind will just start, just start shooting things up to me. It'll start pulling up commentary. That I didn't even ask for. That's because though my soul is, uh, uh, my, my, my spirit is saved, my mind is not yet completely saved. My body shall be saved. My spirit is saved. And my mind, tell somebody, is being saved. Y'all, if I said everything that comes up in my mind, 
that I thought that would not be good. And I'm probably the only one, but my mind gives me options. I said, my mind gives me options. Say this. Now you should say that. Tell them you go pray for them. Tell them you could care less what they think. And then repent about it all later. My mind gives me options. If I said everything that I thought, I could not be your pastor. Because our mind is not completely saved. So that's why we need to pray. Because we need God to help us. We need him to help us make right choices out of the many options that our mind wants to shoot up in our direction. Just because you think it does not mean that you should say it. And can I tell you that your mind is not just your brain. Okay, your mind is the seat of your affections. Okay, it's your, it's your memories. It's your recollection. It's the flashbacks that you have. It's the experiences that you went through. It's, it's, the, it's the thing that, that you went through and shouldn't have survived, but you did survive, but your mind tells you how you feel about it. Yeah. All of that has, all of those feelings have not fully been saved yet. So I got to be careful because I still have a memory. Y'all look like you can't remember. Listen, if you knew how to get high when you were in the world, Maybe I should come over here and get some help. If you knew how to roll a joint when you were in the world, you don't usually forget that because you came to Jesus. Oh, I just forgot. I can't do that anymore. Lie, lie, lie. Don't act like you forgot. Oh, just because you've been baptized in Jesus' name. Now I can't, I can't remember. Because the truth is, all of that continues to live inside of us. And therein lies the struggle. Because the good that I would do, I do not do. Y'all ain't helping me. I do not do what I would do. But the evil that I do, I really don't want to be doing that. So, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? I thank God that it is through Jesus Christ my Lord, hit somebody and tell him he's transforming my mind. It's going to take a minute, but he's trans. The Christ in me is the hope of glory. Yeah, my mind still goes there, but I stop it before it takes me in a path that I do not want to go back into. And the more you feed your mind the word of God, the quicker the change takes place in your life. Does somebody know what I'm talking about today? So Ephesians 2 and 1, just write it down. And you, had they quickened you who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in times past you walked according to the counsel of the world yeah. according to the prince and the power of the air the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience in other words don't forget you used 
to walk that same path. Look at somebody and tell them, but I don't walk that path anymore. I don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. So in other words, if you are an alcoholic and you are trying to get free from that demon of alcoholism, do not go looking for people who are alcoholics to get advice. If you were a drug addict, don't go looking for others who, well, maybe they just can relate to what I am facing. Listen, their reasoning is flawed because they have not yet been regenerated. Regenerated. They have not been changed. So their, their whole thing is flawed. And if you keep turning uh, to the unregenerated to be regenerated, you will always come up short. And though you come in here and you are fed by the word of God in this church you are never really changed because though I may be your pastor they are your teachers and you take what they are teaching you for truth but any time that you have been saved any time that you have been born again any time that you have come out of something you cannot keep being fed by it or you will be entangled again with the yoke of bondage God said I brought you out of that yoke of bondage and you cannot afford to be entangled with that yoke of, I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but I know this is for somebody or I would not be preaching it. He said, the prince and the power of the air. If you go back and read it, it says in two and one and two, it says the prince and the power of the air, which we know to be Satan, yeah. that he sets the course for the world. I said he sets the course for the world. And so, if you're not careful, then what we end up doing is when we step into the world's course, the winds as they begin to blow and the trends of the, of the world as they begin to blow, they knock us out of God's course because now we have been set on the, the world's course. Verse 2 says, tell us that the prince and the power of the air, Satan, it says that he is a spirit. Anytime you see the word spirit in the word, what it means is it has persuasive power. I'm, I'm too much for y'all today. I can't. <laughs> Satan, the Bible said, is a spirit. And he had, that means he has persuasive power. And sometimes you are not ready to try and come up against that persuasiveness by yourself. So the best thing you can do is disassociate yourself because you don't have the power yet to convert what you are still tempted by. Wow. Woo. I know you meant well, but you ain't there yet. Tell somebody you ain't there yet. It, it, and if your mind isn't ready yet, and if your mind isn't renewed yet, it will always go. Here's what we got to understand. Our mind will always go in the direction of what is pulling it. Right. I said our mind will always go in the direction of whatever is persuasive in our ear. Your mind has got to be renewed because it will always, always go in the direction it thinks. So you have to be careful how you think. Because if you think you will fail, you will 
faith. If you think your marriage will not last, your marriage will not last. If you think you are unhappy, you are unhappy. If you think I'm going to die, I'm going to die. That's going to take me out just like it took my mama out. If you believe that, you will die. If you think you will never have enough, you will never have enough. If you think you will never own a home, you will never own a home. If you think you can never afford to tithe, you will never be able to tithe because you will always go in the direction that you are. Thank you. Thank you. But if you'll change how you're thinking. Look at somebody, tell them you can change where you're going. If you change how you're thinking, you can, the, the prodigal son was in the hog pen and he was out there living with pigs and he, all of a sudden, he said, I will, uh, his mind changed. He said, I will arise. I'm coming out of this and I'm going back to my father's house. Do y'all hear me? He made up the woman that had the issue of blood just kept saying, if I can but touch him, if I can but touch him, if I can but wear is he? Wherever he's at, that's where I'm going. Because if I can but touch him, if I can just touch him, I will be made whole. He will do for me what all the doctors have not been able to do. If I can but, if I can but, if I can but, if I can but. Look at somebody and tell him you need to put a butt in it. That's what you need to put. You need to put a butt in your situation. But God, who is rich in mercy, I've been sick, but God, I've been in debt, but God, I've been behind, but God, I owe the IRS, but God, I got school loans that haven't been canceled, but God, my daddy was unfaithful, but God, cancer took my grandmother out, but God. High five three people and tell them, put a butt in it. I was rejected, but come. I was left for dead, but put a butt in it. But come, who is rich in mercy. His mercy can break every yoke. It can break every ungodly pattern. It can break every spirit of poverty. It can break every spirit of lack. It can break every spirit of lust, every spirit of addiction, rebellion, limitation, and every generational curse. Tell your neighbor, He's got more than enough mercy for me. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Write this down. Here's the recipe to obtaining the blessing. Number one, don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly or the world. Number two, don't stand in the way of sinners. Now, many people, when they preach that, they think that it means, don't you get in the way of somebody coming to know Christ. That's kind of how I was brought up. But it really means, it might mean that, but I think it means so much more than that. It means don't take the path that sinners take. The word sinners there means people that miss the mark. So don't take the path of people that miss the mark. Don't take the road that the sinners take. Don't go in the direction that sinners go. 
Don't choose the course of life that they choose. Don't do it the way they would do it. Okay? Don't get in the way. Look at somebody say, change your ways. If you really want to be blessed, number one, you don't walk in their counsel. Number two, you don't stand in their ways. Yeah. And sometimes that means you got to change the way you act. Yeah. You got to change the way you talk. You got to change the way you walk. You got to change the way you think. You got to change the way you dress. Well, I love Jesus, Pastor Brady, but I'm still having that battle in my mind. Okay, I get that. We have those battles in our mind. But in the meantime, you ain't got to wear your dress all the way up to here. Hello? Number three, I'm going to keep moving. Don't sit in the seat of the scornful. What that really means is don't hang out with bitter people. Because bitter people are filled with negativity. And if you uh, become bitter, if you become cynical, and if you become critical, if, if you become a negative person, you cannot be blessed. You might look like you're blessed right now, but a blessing speaks to the end of a thing. A scorned person is a dangerous person. And I say that they're dangerous because the moment that you don't do it like they want you to do it, they will have it out for you. Anybody ever had people like that in your life? Now, if you would have done it their way, you would have been the best thing, the most wonderful person. But since you didn't, now you're a devil. David never did anything to Saul. But Saul hated him. Saul had been rejected. And because Saul had been rejected, he hated David's acceptance. He felt like David's opportunity made him lose his chance. Saul sat in the seat of the scornful shooting javelins at a man who was innocent. Shooting javelins at a man that God was committed to blessing. Saul didn't get what he wanted. So he lost all hope and he became bitter. Bitterness was Spoil all of your opportunities to be blessed. Look at somebody and tell them, don't blow it over bitterness. Saul's logic was tainted. Do you hear me? And if his logic was tainted, and, and, and you could tell by the way he was acting that everything he did and felt it made all the sense in the world to him. And if you are not a person that's reflective, yeah. hello, if you are not a thinking person, look at somebody and say, for God's sake, be a thinking person. <laughs> because if you're not careful, you will buy into Saul's behavior. You will buy into Saul's Bitterness, and you will be stuck wondering why you have lost your blessing. But I can answer that for you. It's because 
you have taken on their offense. And you've taken on their language. And you've taken on their truth. It's not true, but it's truth to them. And now you know better, but you've taken on their truth. And now their offense and their language and their truth has taken over your mind. Look at somebody and tell him, get out the seat of the scornful. Listen, I know people will do you wrong. And I know there are people that just will not do right. They won't be fair. I know that there are unjust people. I know that there are people that have disappointed you, people that have passed you over and gave the promotion to somebody that was on a lesser level than you are in Happens, but I want to tell you today that you have got to get over that because if you don't get over it, you will become bitter, and there's no way that you can be better if you stay bitter all of your life. So you got to pray until that bitterness comes up out of your spirit. You got to fast. You got to, whatever you got to do, you got to serve in the house. You got to take medication. You got to go to counseling. You got to go to therapy. Whatever it is, you got to do what you got to do because you got to get that cough it up, throw it up, spit it up. But that spirit of bitterness has got to come up out of look at somebody say not another day not another day I don't care what they said I don't care what they did I don't care who left and I don't care who they left with and I don't care what shape they left you in you got to get that bitter spirit out of you Because you can be faithful to the church. Yeah. You can be faithful to serve. You can be faithful to give in every offering. You can be faithful to be part of the legacy program. You can help in every building program. You can know every word to every song and say amen louder to the preacher than anybody in the building does. But if you don't get rid of bitterness, it is going to kill Hello? It's going to kill you. You are, when you have bitterness in you, you are toxic. And you can't be toxic and have the blessing all at the same time. That doesn't mean you won't become toxic toxic for a moment. And now because you are toxic for the moment, God snatches your blessing. That's not what I'm talking about because a blessing speaks to the end of the thing. But God will give you a minute to get yourself together. Anybody know that? Woo, you said it. That I tell you right now, they better not push me one more. If they push me, I am going to take matters into my own hands. And God is like, all right. I'm watching. Next thing you know, you're like, God, I don't want to lose the blessing on my life because it ain't worth it. It just is not worth it. Help me create in me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit in me. Yes, they hurt you. Yes, they broke you. Yes, they humiliated you. Yes, they shattered your heart. Yes, they lied on you. Yes, she left you for another man. Yes, he left you for another woman. But whatever the situation is, you have got to get it out of You! So let me sum it up. Number one, don't, if you want to really be blessed, don't listen to the counsel of the ungodly. Don't do what sinners do, number two. Number three, don't sit in the seat of the scornful even if it's got your name on it. 
because the devil will have reserved seating for you. Oh, they got my name. Be careful. He'll set you up. Those are the three things that you don't do. But here's one of the things that you do do, which is number four. Delight yourself in the law of the Lord and meditate in it both day and night. God is saying to somebody in here today that in order to have the kind of blessing on your life that God wants you to have, in order to have the kind of blessing that God says you have got to have for him to be able to do what he plans to do in your life, I need you to make sure that the word is a priority in your life. I need to see consistency in your life so that I can put on you and bless you with the way that I want to bless you. But I first have to see consistency. And it is the word of God that will make you consistent. And when I see that consistency that is in your life, you will be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of water, not just water, and not just a river, but you will have more than enough water to get all of the nourishment that you need. Look at somebody and tell him he wants to plant you by rivers. And the reason he wants to do that is so that you will bring forth fruit in it. So there is a set time that God has to bless your life. Stop stressing yourself out over the season you are in. I am where I am by the grace of God. You are not meant to bear fruit 24 7. The land had to rest every seven years. If the land has to rest, you and I have to rest. So you can't be trying your 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 hardest to be so productive every day of your life that you don't have time to rest because what that will call because here at the end of the day he said if you are planted where I want you to be planted you are being nourished and when it is your time fruit more fruit and much fruit He'll come forth. Your leaf ain't even going to wither. And here I am. And whatsoever you do shall prosper. He said, I will stop you from even having the appearance of declining. Your leaf will not God says, I'm going to take your life and I am going to plant you by an unlimited supply of what you need to be nourished so that when it's time to bring forth fruit in your life, you will bring forth fruit in its season. I'm going to put you in a place where you will, that, that, I'm going to put you in a place that will be conducive to your purpose. Woo! I'm going to put you in a place that will be conducive to the blessing that I want to put on your life. I am going to put 
you in a position to connect you with all of the resources that you are going to need that I, so that I can bring up out of you everything that I have put in you. So I'll make sure that you'll leave us not with her. And whatsoever he to it shall prosper. Now hear it. God says, if you'll do it, I'll bless it. Tell somebody your blessing is in doing. Oh, so stretch yourself. Even when times are hard, because you can do it. The widow had just enough bread to make her and her son something to eat for one last time. The prophet of God comes in and says, make me a cake first. Do you not hear what I said? I have just enough to feed my son and myself and then we're going to die. The prophet said, bring it to me first. Woo, look at somebody and say, just do it, just do it. Woo. And because she did it, her meal barrel never went dry. She may have never saw it running over, but every time she scooped one out, God put one back. Tell somebody it pays to just do it. Bring me all the tithe into the storehouse that there might be meat in my house. Look at somebody and say, just do it. Because every time God sees a doing people, he said, watch me open up the windows. Tell your neighbor you ain't waiting on God. God is waiting on you. God cannot bless what you do not do. I said God cannot bless what you do not do. So stop asking him to bless your dysfunction. Get up and put some function in your dysfunction. And then back up and ask God to bless what you have done. Hear me. Hear me and I'm going to stop. Don't listen. What you do shall prosper. Yeah. Don't, don't just hear that and think, oh, well, that means that everything I touch yeah. is going to be blessed. Come on, come on. Because that's not what that means. Yeah. It doesn't, well, everything I think is just going to be blessed. It doesn't say that. It doesn't say Whatsoever he thinketh shall prosper. Whatsoever he dreameth shall prosper. Whatever he's wishing for shall prosper. God says, if you'll do something for me to bless. Y'all ain't hear me. He said, I will bless it, but I cannot bless what you will not do. And don't underestimate what it's going to cost you to do something, to do something. Okay. Sit down, I need two minutes. I got so tickled at my dog last night. Well, let, let me go back and say this. 
Don't underestimate what it's going to cost you to do something. Because when you do it, and when you throw everything that you've got behind it, yeah. if it turns around and punches you in the face, that's going to leave you traumatized. Yeah. I'm telling y'all what I've lived and what I know. If you, it turns around and punches you, it could cause you to want to turn away from the process yeah. completely. Yeah. So it's not as easy as it sounds. Last night I was sitting at my desk and I was working and I was preparing this and all of a sudden I just, I felt these eyes staring up at me. I knew it had to be Billy because no other eyes in my house is going to get down like that because they wouldn't be able to get back up. So, Bentley, y'all see him? This was last night. I was trying to ignore him because I'm telling you the foul birds of hell manifest in him whenever I'm trying to get a message ready for Sunday morning. He just bugs me, okay? So I was doing my best to ignore him. The next thing I know my big old chair and my big old body is shifted. And I looked and Bentley had taken his 17 pound self and threw all of his weight on the side of my chair. Look at somebody and say, how bad do you want it? Do you want it bad enough to throw everything you got at it? Hello? Do you want it bad enough to take everything that you got and throw it at it? My chair moved. Look at somebody and tell them it will move if you move. Addictions will move. Poverty will move. Habits will move. If you hit it hard enough, it was unfair that his little 17 pound self could take my body and my chair and shift it. It should have been unheard of, but because he wanted it so bad, Are you willing to do what it takes? Look at somebody and ask them, are you willing to throw everything at it? Because if you are, God said, I will open the window. Pull on your neighbor and say, neighbor, something is getting ready to move on your behalf. The blessing is coming when you do. Tell somebody, just do it. And when God sees that you're willing to do it, he will open up. Whatsoever your hands find to do it with all of your might.